You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. And we're incredibly proud to have achieved uh, that. The yesterday's news release was a major milestone and something that we've been working on for, for really years. And to be able to, to get over that global envelope of 100, uh, actually 104 million tons at 0.85% copper equivalent, uh, which equates to nearly 2 billion pounds of copper in the ground, pit constrained, uh, high confidence ounces. This is not an inferred resource. This is 82% measured and indicated, which uh, you know certainly exceeded exp- our expectations. Welcome back to Mining Stock Education. I'm your host, Bill Powers. And in today's episode, we're going to be getting an update from Stephen Stewart. He is the CEO of QC Copper and Gold, one of our sponsors. And to start off with, I'd like to read a quote from Stephen on this show in November of last year, what he said about their Obamiska copper project in Chibougamou, Quebec. And Stephen, you said, everybody wants to see how big this is. What's the MPV? What's the IRR? Does this make sense? We think it does. Our goal, a forward-looking statement, is we think we can take this to 100 million ton range at 1% copper. And with your recent press release this week, it looks like you kind of hit that goal, didn't you? Yeah, I think we did, Bill. Thank you. And, uh, you know, we're incredibly proud to have achieved uh, that. The yesterday's news release was a major milestone and something that we've been working on for, for really years. And to be able to, to get over that global envelope of 100, uh, actually 104 million tons at 0.85% copper equivalent, uh, which equates to nearly 2 billion pounds of copper in the ground, pit constrained, uh, high confidence ounces. This is not an inferred resource. This is 82% measured and indicated, which uh, you know, it certainly exceeded exp- our expectations. So, uh, you know, we're over the moon. That's that's over eight billion dollars of gross metal value in the ground in the best mining jurisdiction in the world. And you put into this project uh, drill holes yourself, but you also use a lot of historic data from Falconbridge. Can you talk to us about about why we as investors can trust this uh, data? Well, Falcon Bridge, uh, for those who don't know, were major operators uh, in Canada. Uh, uh, they've since uh, they're since now now known as Glencore. They were taken over in incarnations. But uh, so one, they were great operators. Two, if if you're mining the deposit, you have to trust your drill data because if your drill data is incorrect or inflated, it sometimes happens uh, in the junior mining industry. You lose money. So, you know, we approached this data, obviously, um, you know, trust, but we had to verify. We, we trust that the data was of high quality. We spent two years building this model. And then our maiden drill program, uh, which we went back, uh, go, going back to 2019, was aimed at testing, uh, A, the validity of the data, which it, it came back positive, and, and B, uh, what we saw that was unique in the data, and that is, is this uh, disseminated? Because when Falcon Bridge was mining this deposit, uh, to remind people, this, these were four high-grade underground uh, mines, vein systems, and, and Falcon Bridge did very little testing outside of the veins. So in the hanging wall and the foot wall, they just, just largely ignored it. Because when you see these veins, and we've got pictures on our website, it's it, they look like pure metal, very very high grade. So they they saw what they wanted to mine, they mined it, they ignored uh, the other stuff. Now, when there was some more modern drilling um, by us and by uh, the, the the company, the private company that we acquired it from, we saw in their data this clearly disseminated mineralization. We saw that in the data, but we had to again, we trusted it, but we had to go out and verify it. Twenty nineteen proved that we drilled thirteen holes over a hundred meters. Uh, with ore grade mineralization throughout, nicely disseminated. We knew we were onto something there, but you know it wasn't the right time for copper at the time. Copper was muted to say say the least, and it wasn't until uh, later in 2020 where copper caught a bid. We raised uh, over five million dollars that year, and we deployed it earlier in 2021 with the 20,000 meter drill campaign aimed at again further uh, defining uh, the the mineralization as we understood it, but really systematically drilling it out so we can define this pit. And uh, everything was calm with the release of the report yesterday, which uh, defined, as I said, 2 billion pounds of copper equivalent in an open pit. And I emphasize there's room to grow. So um, if you look at our, our pit shells that we publish in our presentation, you can see where, a, where the grade distribution is, but you can also see where we've uh, constrained this model, right? So it's all based on a on an NPV uh, optimized pit. So uh, outside of those pits, there's clearly mineralization that we see from the Falcon Bridge data and some of the holes that we drilled, but just don't have enough drill density to include it uh, in this particular resource. So uh, what I'm saying is this is going to get bigger. 
Okay, there's no question about it. So uh, our shareholders, our followers can expect us uh, through the balance of this year and obviously 2022 uh, to get out there and, and expand this thing, expand uh, in and around this super pit. Uh, as well, we haven't even touched our third four, uh, four, third and fourth mine on the Opamisca, what was known as the Opamisca under Falconbridge, which is the, the Robitaille, which is another copper-rich high-grade underground mine. We haven't put a hole into it. And then there's the Cook, which was a, a gold-rich, gold uh, five gram per ton gold uh, deposit that has a nice copper credit. And then, of course, we've acquired earlier this year our Roger project, which is 17 million tons at one gram uh, per ton gold. So a, a similar style deposit, 15 kilometers away by rail, directly on the rail, that we view as a satellite deposit. So we've got um, four areas of growth. The pit itself, uh, the, the, the Cook, the Robitaille, and the Rogers. So we've got our, our work cut out for us. We know we have high confidence in what the mineralization looks like, but we just got to repeat the same exercise we've done on the Opamisca on these other three. So you applied to this deposit a different geological model, kind of like what Osisco did with Canadian Malarctic. So this super bit you're, you're telling us could even get bigger, such as Canadian Malarctic did. Well, uh, well absolutely. Canadian Malarctic you know, came out with their maiden resource. And I believe their maiden resource was four or five million ounces uh, of gold. And I think that was in 27, uh, 2007, if I recall correctly. Uh, if you convert our two billion, two billion pounds of, of copper into a gold equivalent, well, that's, you know, using spot price, that's 4.75 million. So, you know, but we're actually a higher grade. If you, if you look at 0.85% copper equivalent, that's about 1.4% uh, or excuse me, 1.4 grams per ton gold. So we're actually a higher margin mar mar margin project than Alarctic. And today we're on the same scale. So uh, absolutely, we, as to answer your question, we applied a different geologic model uh, that is akin. It's, it's identical to what uh, the guys at Cisco did very, very successfully at, at Malarctic, but they started um, basically where we're started. So we're a new story. The similarities are, are, are remarkable, in fact. Uh, we're in Quebec, uh, high-grade um, uh, high underground mine, living a new life. Um, and, and, and so we're, we're entirely excited. And, and just like the Malarctic has gone from that four or five million ounces to 10 plus, I don't even know how big it is now, but it's a monster. It's a Canada's largest gold mine. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not forecasting that's that's the direction or that's the scale we can get. Maybe it's certainly on the table, but, you know, we're heading uh, in the direction of growth. There's no question about it that this is going to get substantially larger than the 104 million tons today. And so you basically prep the project uh, to have an economic study, because as you said, the, these are the measured and indicated categories, which for listeners that don't know, this means there's a higher certainty. They, they know more than the inferred care, uh, category, which is less certain. So the measured and indicated are more certain. The pit constraint makes it even more certain and preps it for an economic study. So talk to us about the next step. You mentioned the exploration potential, but are you also going to be progressing the economic side of uh, the study as you drill more? Well, I think first things first, we're going to focus on getting this larger because we see low hanging fruit to do that. And that's where we're going to get the best bang for our buck before we start putting economics on something that we know is just going to get bigger. So I think if we if we put uh, a PEA or pre-feasibility on this uh, resource as it's understood today, I think we're underserving our shareholders because we know it's so much bigger. It just needs some more drilling. So that is going to be where our focus uh, is. Is So get this as big as we think it's going to be. Then we put the ec economics on it. And I think, you know, I, I, I'm not sure how we're going to handle it, but, you know, because we do have so much measured and indicated today, that allows us to put it into a pre-feasibility study uh, and, and get reserved. Okay, so that's an added benefit is that you can't put inferred ounces or pounds into a uh, proven and probable category, but measured and indicated can. So we've always been telling the market that we believe that this has the ability to be fast tracked, not just fast track, but built this cycle. Um, and so just the ability to have high confidence pounds and ounces certainly adds to that uh, view. So we're going to we're going to push hard. We're going to we're going to come out with uh, aggressive drill campaign. Uh, certainly economics is, is, is something that we're uh, thinking about in the background. We've run internal economics ourselves. It's just not 43101. So, uh, you know, we have a good deal of confidence in what this asset is today and certainly what we think it's going to be tomorrow and beyond. Let's talk valuation to peers. Uh, if you just throw out the billion plus pounds of copper you have, you, you're sitting on over a million ounces of gold, 
in a great jurisdiction. Your market cap after the press release came out to, I think, like 26, 27 million Canadian. Um, talk to us about your enterprise value and then also what you have this valuation relative to some peers. So um, in terms of our enterprise value, we've got about $14 million worth of base load. So base load is a company uh, operated by James Sykes, brilliant uranium geologist. We've benefited greatly from that. We did a great corporate deal. Uh, so that's $14 million. You can strip that off the 27. And then we have uh, $3 million in cash today. So you know, right now, post resource, we're getting $10 million uh, in market cap uh, enterprise value for 2 billion, 2 billion pounds of copper pit constrained plus our 500,000 ounce deposit uh, uh, in the Roger, which is a one grammar. So, I mean, I mean, one could argue it's it's negligible, the value we're getting. But yesterday was day one, Bill. So I, I, I fully expect this to expand and expand quickly. In terms of comparables, I don't see any, okay? I don't see any comparables. There are, there are no comparables with this grade size uh, level of confidence in Quebec. Uh, you'd have to go to South America, which has a completely different risk profile, to, to see any deposits comparable. I, I think the closest deposits, I mean, because copper deposits are so rare, okay, uh, you know, but gold deposits are more or less rare. And so there are, um, there are deposits which I feel we're more comparable to in the gold space in terms of gross metal value. I mean, because at the end of the day, we're mining money, okay, whether it's copper or gold, we're mining money and, mar and we're looking at margin. And to me, the, the best comparable is Marathon. Okay. So Marathon's got uh, six, seven million ounces. They're bigger than us right now. They're a touch higher grade, but they're in the seven, eight hundred million dollar market cap. Okay. So that's a bold statement from a company that's got a $27 million market cap. But when you look at the assets, uh, we're not that far off. Uh, and so we're day one. We got a ways to go. Um, we're going to grow this resource, but that's to me, that's the target. I mean, I, I think this thing has a $500 million valuation on it, uh, all else equal. That's the direction I'm going to take this company. Okay. So Stephen, the ore group you've said on this show in the past, you look for assets that are undervalued, that have potential. You take those assets, you develop value, and then you're going to sell it because you're not a producer, an operator. So have there been any confidentiality agreements signed as, as of yet? Is there any interest from mid-tiers or majors? My skill set, my team's skill set, no question, is uh, surrounding finding overlooked opportunities, playing the cycle. It's very, very difficult to find a Voices Bay, you know, sort of thing. You do that once in your life if you're lucky. So I don't anticipate being that lucky. So I look for overlooked opportunities, just like the Opamisca, where it was effectively, uh, you know, valueless. Uh, but we saw something, and that's that's what we do. We look for problems we think we can solve. We've, uh, we haven't solved all the problems of Opamisca. We've got work to do, but we've, uh, as I said, yesterday was day one in defining how big this thing is. And in terms of getting interest from producers, yes, we've had, uh, you know, over the past year or so, we've had a lot of interest. So people, uh, smart money, smart investors have, have taken notice, but also strategics. Um, so we have shown them our database uh, prior to this resource. We have had some very interesting phone calls yesterday when the resource comes out. Um, you know, we'd certainly entertain uh, interest from strategic partners, but it would have to be on the right terms. To be honest with you, all else equal, um, there's ample capital available to us today from um, institutional and, and retail, call it non-strategic investors. I think that's the best course for us not to get married immediately. Um, so that's probably the route we'll take. Uh, and uh, when the time is right, when we build the value, when we are you know, uh, nine figure, multiple nine figure valuation, that's when we could consider um, getting a dance partner, if you will. And just remind us, what percentage ownership do you have of this project? Me, I've got about five or six percent. And the company, sorry, the company, uh, QC Copper and Gold, uh, what percentage ownership of the Opamisca? Okay, so this is an option agreement, okay, where we, uh, we have uh, already exceeded our work commitments, okay? So all we have to do to own 100% of it is write a $1 million check to the vendor, uh, which we have that money in the bank, and issue them some shares and options. Uh, and we have three years to do that. So uh, all can be accelerated at day one at our options. So those conversations will be had when we feel it's appropriate. But you know the, the big part was obviously the work commitments, but we, we well overspent uh, on, on the timeframes on that. So we're in a really good position to own 100%.
And Stephen, as we conclude, uh, remind us of the upcoming catalyst for the next, let's say, three to six months. Watch out for some more drilling. Um, it's it, that's it. We're going to have some more details on our drill drill program, and then um, when the time is right, we'll come out with uh, an updated forty three one hundred one resource. Simple as that. How big are we going? How how big are we going to get this? That's the question mark uh, in my mind. And how quickly too, right? I think of Gerald Pentaton with Detour Lake. He took it from like a million and a half ounces of gold to like 15 million ounces. Wasn't it in like two years or something like that? Well, that's, that's a remarkable growth trajectory. Um, uh, you know, certainly uh, let's see how we do uh, in the next six months. I mean, that's where I'm thinking. I don't get too far ahead of us. Um, we're going to put a lot of meters into the ground. I mean, that's what it is. They expect a substantive drill program to uh, further delineate and grow this pit, but also uh, give some attention to the other mines. I mean, other producing Falcon Ridge mines that we have not even poked any holes into. So there's really uh, a lot of opportunity to grow uh, on this project. I'm excited. I really am. All right. To learn more about the company, go to qccopper.com, trades in Toronto as QCCU, and on the OTC for United States listeners, QCCUF. Stephen, thanks for coming on the show and providing this update. Fantastic, Bill. Thank you very much for having me as always. 